Hey guys, uh, welcome back to this uh, tutorial. We're in part two. Uh, this is optional. Uh, we're going to be looking at the texturing inside of World Machine. And uh, it's, we're not going to be using the textures, so we're not going to be looking at all the specifics of them. But we'll run through, I'll run, th run you through the essentials of it, and I'll be showing you also um, how you can, well, what you can use these, uh, these uh, flow maps and uh, distribution maps for uh, inside of uh, View or Photoshop or anything else that you want to do your texturing in. So I've done a high res render of our of my original ter uh, terrain to show you. So it's uh, only at two two K, but you can see this sort of additional details. Uh, the main reason I wanted to do that was so that I can show you these. Uh, these these texture mo nodes a little bit better uh, from top top down. So you can see the sort of detail that I've got there. This is just pl simply plugging in the uh, the flow map data from our mountain terrain, uh, our mountain erosion, and using a macro uh, to get these colors uh, for the rocks and such. The another one that I'll show you is the fields. This is just a simple uh, using the the wear map to uh, to try and extract the detail from the uh, the wearing on the what on the rocks. Um, this is our water, which is not at all water. It's just a blue um, a blue color. Um, and then here here I've got them uh, combining. And now this is essentially the same sort of process as what we uh, used before to uh, add the uh, the fields and the mountains together as you can see as I flick through uh, it's a slightly different load than I've added the water and uh, so there's uh, sorry there's the there's the water there and uh, and then the way I'm using these is I'm grabbing uh, certain elements and I'm using uh, sl uh, s height selectors and slope selectors so you can find them inside the uh, fill and inside the selector is there's the height and there's the slope uh, selection when uh, when I double click on this uh, I'll just bring it up to the top left here so you can see the comparison a little bit easier I've selected a height uh, so that I'm trying to just click uh, to Restrict and and uh, extract the the grass uh, slopes. So where I want my uh, just my grass texture to go. So you can see the sort of effect there as I go up, go down. It's choosing different uh, different heights of my terrain. Now for the slope selector, uh, this is awesome in terms of uh, getting. Uh, a material in certain areas of a of a mountain terrain. If I show you our uh, combined mountain, if you just look over in uh, this area here, as I switch between the chooser and uh, sorry and the fields, you'll notice there's still some fields data coming in here. If I just uh, zoom in a little bit for you, uh, you'll see. There we go. See this uh, this yellow through here. Um, that is actually the texture map of our fields, and so, well, obviously so is uh, so is this part through here. So that's really useful. Instead of just adding uh, the entire mountain terrain there, we've added the mountain terrain, but also mixed it with our. Uh, with our our main fields, it just gives a little bit more detail. So in order to do that, uh, we've got uh, we'll take we'll take for example our first mountain and fields. We've got the two here. They are being passed into a chooser, which bases its control uh, similar to the way we did our control here with the black to white uh, mask. But this one is taking a black to white mask from our slope selector, and you can see. I'll go to the I'll go to the overlay view. It's a little bit better. 
<coughs> you can see the, the great detail here that you can extract and you can actually uh, use this inside of view to uh, to mat to add materials based on the black to white so for instance on the right here if you just wanted to add snow uh, or uh, like a light sandy rock to that white area so that you've got that uh, soft uh, f flowing uh, sort of free flowing particles of, of earth you could add it in there and then also on the black you can have that harder uh, stratum sort of rock that that you would find uh, on a cliff face um, the way this is controlled is it's taking its input from the final output, I believe, no, sorry, not the final output, because the final output includes our beach and our river, and we don't want to include that. We are just combining the mountains and the fields at this point, and so we want to base our uh, chooser on the first combining of our mountain and fields as well. So we're basing the slopes off the original geometry which was simply the mountain and fields and then that gets passed into the uh, the chooser to to create that uh, that texturing so uh, the next one uh, what's what's happening is in the, uh, the I've got a second fields macro which I'm feeding into uh, another chooser but this time based on uh, a height and a slope. So what I've done is I've clamped I've clamped down the height so that when instead of just using the uh, the slopes, this is the sort of effect that I get with the with the slopes. So I've got these white areas uh, here, but I don't want it to affect uh, this upper this this top bit and and all of these areas. So what I'm using as well is the height, uh, just selecting the height and just clamping it to those bottom values which means that when I show you this texture again see how we don't have the, any detail along this right hand side so this allows you, and also actually I've, I don't have any detail through here which I had before um, what I'm actually clamping it to is just these slopes in that mid range now, Again, this is useless because we are not actually using the texture. Um, then I've got the ocean uh, height, so I'm selecting the ocean. I've got my water, uh, you know, ocean color, and I'm combining that with our final uh, material uh, for for the land. And the ocean height, I've just simply, if that's maximum, you can see uh, see there that it's all white that would create a completely blue scene. If I just force that, open this, I can drag that down and you can see this sort of effect that it's got. So around there is fi was fine. Press OK, view the output, just build that. And you can see we've got our blue areas uh, through here and, uh, and our beach across there. So the the slope and height selectors are really really useful uh, you can use an output uh, node as well if you get the just a simple bitmap output connected up with uh, it's actually it's going to have to be a height output because it's a black to white it's not the color use a bitmap output for the texture which is this this here but a height output for anything that's black and white so this height output now, if I was to, uh, I'll just go back into the actual node, and I'll select, let's go bitmap, and I'll just dump it on the desktop as a slope, and so right output, takes just a second because I've already got everything built and we'll go slope we can open that that now I can take into view and use that on the terrain now there's a couple of things to note when importing the textures to to view there is a uh, a 
X, Y, and Z um, uh, coordinate mix up. So you've just got to be a little bit careful. But I'll be showing you that in the next part. So these can be really, uh, really useful for, uh, for using distributions. If I also bring this across to our flow map, we can have a look at, uh, I can't view the output there, but there we go. So don't actually have to save it. But here's our eventually, or oh, it just doesn't want to do it for me. Okay, I will, oh, I've got the preview locked there, so if I just build that, there we go. So this is our flow map from our original mountains uh, erosion. You can see that there, and when I go to the output, this one, you can see the the similarities there. We've got our our areas through here with all the high uh, de deposition of materials. So you can you can drag those and uh, you can extract them, use them inside view uh, to a really really good uh, good potential. I'll just finally show you this one as well, which is the uh, wear map as well. Not quite so good because it's a little bit um, blurred out because the settings that I've used <coughs> have been quite soft. But if you used a harder rock, um, harder rock uh, hardness for here and less sediment carry, you'd get a lot more uh, stronger details on that. So that's all. Uh, all I'm going to go into on the texturing. Um, oh, I will show you these. This macro here is a texturing macro comes with World Machine and you just go into macros and click open and you can get a whole bunch of them off the web there's heaps of them out there and the main one is basic coverage and if you click on it you can see the, that uh, Stephen Schmidt the, the uh, creator of World Machine has created this and you can even go in and edit these macros to see how they are, they are made if I can find out where the button is um, Oh, maybe we've got to double click it then enter macro there we go and yeah I mean I'm not even going to go into that it's uh, I, I understand it but it's it took me a long time to to really uh, get used to it and at the end of the day it's not really useful to understand it as long as you know how to use it um, so there's heaps of different presets, uh, well not presets, heaps of different options here. You can use some of the presets that he's got, uh, which essentially just change the colors that are in use here, and then you can uh, tweak them. You can see the the effect uh, happening. If you tick lighting, you get a nicer, uh, it bakes the lighting into it. Obviously don't use that if you're going to use it for exporting to view, because if you have the light come from a different angle, well, yet needless to say it won't work um, so yeah you can make some really really good textures especially as base uh, bases for matte paintings they can give you a really good idea of um, uh, of just the basic areas where you want to put rocks and basic and softer rocks or, or water etc so that's all for this um, for this section uh, we'll be back uh, part three we'll be starting to put this uh, we'll be exporting this train into uh, view and then we'll be uh, setting it up so that we can put any of our maps that we want to on them and then we're we'll starting on the uh, texturing uh, sorry the, the materials basic lining uh, setting up the the scene for water and, and cameras etc so uh, the next two two parts will be big ones just like the first one but I'll try and get through as much as it um, of it as quickly as possible for you.